Welcome to chapter 16. Well, information, risk, and insurance presented by myself, Michael Zoom II, Alessandro Acosta, Brunar J. Bird Gomas, Emma Witcher, Brett Suter, Leanne Landon, and Erica Russell. In this chapter, we'll be explaining parts one and two, the problem of imperfect information and asymmetric information is part two, insurance and Im imperfect information. The problem of imperfect information and asymmetric information. Asymmetric information situations when buy when sellers have more information about a product than a buyer. This is a type of imperfect information is when um, situations where the buyer, the seller, or both have less than 100% certainty about the quality of what they're buying and selling. When you have a sense of doubt of what you're buying and selling and you regret it, we call this buyer's remorse. The factors of imperfect information affects equilibrium and price. Another piece of imperfect perfect information is that the term simply means that not all the information necessary to make an informed decision is known to the buyers and or sellers. The buyers typically will become reluctant to purchase the product because of the low quality to low ratio. Sellers with high quality goods wouldn't sell because it's difficult to exemplify the value of the goods the buyers. A market with little buyers and sellers is a thin market, which affects the equilibrium in price. What about when price mixes with imperfect information along with the quality? Well, buyers correlate price with quality of any given product. A buyer may assume that a diamond must cost more because of its higher quality, but even then, the buyer cannot confirm it. When buyers do this, equilibrium price and quality quality is made difficult to determine. For example, jewelry store cuts pieces of rings because there is abundance. Imperfect information causes buyers to think that the low price implies low quality. As a result, the low price may not attract more customers. Raising prices may have buyers think of high quality. Now more apples are sold. By apples, it means rings. Expanding on this idea of when prices mix with quality and supply and demand, there is a distinct contradiction between the two. Correlating quality with prices flies in the face of supply and demand. You are not supposed to do that. You are supposed to let the market decide. You yourself cannot attribute value to something simply because the price is high. However, this contradiction does have a limit to where it just turns into absurdity and people catch on. If people realize that they're paying for something overpriced, people will understand that they should not buy that product anymore. Similarly, if people see, see that a price is dropping, so far down, people will buy it, even if they know the qual. they think in their mind the quality is lower. Buyers and sellers, they have mechanisms to reduce the risk of imperfect information. For example, reputation. If you walk into a store, you have a certain expectation of it. That is from a public opinion. Reviews, just people telling you about it. That is a reputation. They also use many, many contracts on products, many, many fail safes to guarantee quality and longevity. For example, in other markets, such as the labor markets, the resume is that assurance of quality. It is that certification that someone can be up to the challenge, can produce good work. Financial capital, they usually use people who can pay for the loan if the person who the loan was given to cannot pay themselves. This is called a co-signer. 
collateral is if you can't pay back the, the loan, the bank will come and seize all your property. They will liquidate it and sell it off for themselves. Now, in the goods markets, the seller may offer a money back guarantee or a promise to repair a product if it becomes broken or unusable. Now, here are all the specific terms that I just talked about. Insurance and premiums. Insurance is a legal document that guarantees that an individual will receive financial protection or reimbursement against covered losses. Policyholders make regular payments to insurance entities. Insurance firms reimburses a group member who suffers significant financial impairment from an event covered by the policy. Premiums are the price of an insurance policy. Monthly cost is determined by the insurer and based on an individual's risk evaluation. State governments run several insurance programs. Some of the programs are like individual insurance. They have members of a group make steady payments into a fund and those in the group receive payments after a specified loss. Other programs protect against risk but without the steady funding of individuals in a group. Social, Social Security and Medicare are social insurance in the sense that the individuals contributing to the fund are not immediately receiving benefits. They function like insurance in the sense that individuals make regular payments into the pro into the programs today in exchange for the benefits they will receive in the case of a medical of medical or retirement altercations. First graph is detailing types of insurance, who pays for it and when it's paid out. First we have health insurance that's paid for by employers and individuals and is paid out when medical expenses are incurred. And next we have life insurance it's paid for by employers and individuals, and it's paid out when the policyholder dies. Next, we have automobile insurance. This is paid for by individuals, and it's paid out when your car is damaged, stolen, or causes damage to others. Next, we have property and homeowners insurance. It's paid for by homeowners and renters, and it's paid out when your dwelling is damaged or burglarized. Next, we have liability insurance that's paid for by firms and individuals, and it's paid out when an injury occurs for which you are partly responsible. Lastly, we have malpractice insurance. This is paid for exclusively by doctors, lawyers, and other professionals, and it's paid out when said professional is accused of poor quality of service that is provided that caused harm to others. The Affordable Act Care and Relief Plan on March 11th, Biden administration announced a special enrollment period to allow people to sign up for health insurance through the federal health insurance marketplace, and it's being extended until August 15th. It was only supposed to go until May 15th. Marketplace was supposed to be open until May 15th, allowing 36 states to sign up or, or change their health insurance plan outside of an annual open enrollment period. The move to add three months allows people to take advantage of the change made to the Affordable Act Care in the Rescue and Relief Plan. The relief package includes a subsidized health insurance premium for those making up to 150% of the poverty line. Those who make up 400% of the poverty line will not have to pay more than 8.5% of their income premiums per bill. Premiums will decrease on average by $50 per person per month in $85 per policy per month. The administration also says one in four enrollees will be able to upgrade their plans on Marketplace to get better out-of-pocket costs at comparable or lower premiums. Through this special enrollment period, the Biden administration is giving the American people the change they need to find the affordable health care plan that works for them. Risk groups and actuarial fairnesses. Risk groups is a group of people that shares roughly the same risk of a loss occurring. Insurance companies will classify people into risk groups and charge lower premiums to those in lower risk groups. If people are not separated into risk groups, the those with low risks will compensate for those with high risks. Moral hazard problem. Sometimes people engage in riskier behavior with insurance than they would if they did not have any insurance. This phenomenon is called moral hazard. Now, insurance companies can prevent these situations 
by conducting investigations to prevent insurance fraud, while also monitoring certain kinds of behavior. The first kind, the first step that an insurance company can take is by issuing deductibles. These are the amount that the policyholder pays before insurance starts paying. For example, a car insurance policy might pay all losses above $500. Next, we have a co-payment. This is when the policyholder pays a small amount and the insurance company pays the rest. The example includes a person may be required to pay $20 per doctor visit and the insurance will pay the rest. Lastly, we have what's called coinsurance. This is when the insurance company pays a certain percentage and the policyholder pays the rest. Example, an insurance company may pay 80% of fire damages and the policyholder pays the remaining 20%. Insurance companies take these precautions to protect themselves. Healthcare provider incentives. Another way of reducing moral hazard is to focus on the incentives of providers rather than consumers. This is applicable to healthcare. An older way of insurance, fee for service. Provider are paid for the service they provide and are paid more if they provide additional services. Newer way of insurance, health maintenance organization, HMO, provides healthcare that receives a fixed amount per person enrolled in the plan, regardless of how many services are provided. A patient with insurance has an incentive to demand more care. A healthcare provider has the incentive to lower the moral hazard problem by limiting the uh, quantity of care provided. Adverse selection. The problem in which insurance buyers have more information about whether they are high risk or low risk than insurance companies does. This cre creates an asymmetric information problem for the insurance company. Rather than face such a situation of adverse selection, the insurance company may decide not to sell insurance in this market at all. If an insurance market is to exist, one of two things must happen. First, the insurance company must find a way of separating insurance buyers into risk groups in order to not to sell to high-risk buyers. Second, there could be a requirement that those with low risk must buy insurance, even if they have to pay more than a fair amount for their risk group. The notion that people can be required to purchase insurance raises the issue of government laws and regulations that influence the ins insurance industry. Insurance company end up losing money and raising premiums to cover high risk losses will discourage individuals with low or medium risk from buying insurance. The US healthcare is leading in amount of money spent per person compared to other countries. This system has high costs and not everyone can receive medical care without risking cost. Other countries such as Sweden have equal access and fair pricing, which allows them to be able to access healthcare without worrying about being able to pay it back. They often struggle with rapid access to healthcare and offer what is usually available at the time, meaning that US healthcare has a tendency to just offer the fast, quick treatment, despite some people needing longer care, longer. Um, financial issues and just struggling with everything in general when it comes to pricing and medical care. The National Commission Associates of Insurance Commissioners collaborate with state regulators and they come up with strategies and information in hopes to keep everyone happy, prices low, and able to afford insurance and receive it. And the Affordable Care Act was passed in October 2013 in sight of everyone in the U.S. to be able to get insurance. Our last graph of the PowerPoint details the GDP per capita and health consumption spending per capita in 2019. This graph helps us understand better our last slide of the PowerPoint. As you can see, the top little speck at the top is the United States. We have a GDP per capita of 65,000 and a health spending per capita of about 11,000. Now, if you go down and you see the, the dot, the next dot all the way down there, that's Switzerland. Their GDP per capita is about $74,000 with a health spending per capita of about $8,000.
this graph really helps us to see the difference in the amount that we spend on our health. So the government regulation of insurance, they cannot force companies to charge low prices and provide high levels of insurance com coverage for a sustained period. If premiums are set below the actuarially fair level for a certain group, some other group will have to make up the difference. The only groups who can cover the difference are taxpayers and other insurance buyers. All right, so we have UL's healthcare and a government regulation of insurance. So the government pays for insurance directly because the free markets can't provide affordable prices. This allows for like presidents to have like Obamacare and to have Medicare and Medicaid plans available for low income and elderly patients. Um, another common government intervention is that insurance markets require that everyone buys a certain kind of insurance. You can have car, homeowners, cybersecurity, and medical as we all know. The Affordable Care Act, all individuals who do not receive health care through their employer or through a government program are required to have health insurance or pay a fine. This means that every state is required to have health insurance or utilize federal exchange, whereby insurance companies compete for business and the employer mandate requires that all employees with more than 50 employees must offer health insurance to their employees. All right, for cybersecurity insurance, recently there has been a um, report on it. And we know that um, ransom, spending doubles, three sector target, which is technology, media, and telecoms, insurance take ups, big firms, German firms, and expected fair hire. There was an analysis created that went over these and how the proportions paid a ransom was about 71%. The recovery um, costs were about 45% average. So mainly this is more about like having that sense of security within your company to make sure that these incidents don't happen. Um, you can lose a lot of data and these um, hacks can really, really determine how it would how your business can either go up or down based off the aftermath. Um, oops. More for an example, in this type of situation in Florida, someone was able to hack into the water supply, which was very dangerous, but it was through remote um, sharing of passwords to the coworkers. Um, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, a lot of people have been able to work at home, which is a bit good and comforting, but we still have to be aware that there are hackers who are able to gain um, information. And because the um, software that they were using, which was TeamViewer, didn't have a firewall and the authentication, which is um, mostly a two-factor thing, as we know, this allowed people, well, the hackers, to hack that. and they gained some pretty private information. And it was a risk because not only is this just honestly a water supply in Florida, but this could have been anywhere if this information was able to be gathered by these people. Um, the recommendations by Damon Small, who works in the oil and gas industry, said that he thinks there should be no shared accounts, which was a problem. There should be a multi-factor authentication, which is honestly a great solution because there sometimes you have to connect to your phone, get a code sent there, and that's amazing. And three is a virtual private network, VPN. And these are mainly honestly safe because personally I have one for like my Wi-Fi at home so people are not able to like have free Wi-Fi based on my cable service and I think this will be great in in a way to protect privacy. Companies will be able to secure those informations to their consumers and customers. Um, a big takeaway from this was that there needs to be a conversation among securities about security, sorry, in a workplace that is now at home. We have to think about um, how information can be shared and how it is important that we keep it sacred. To summarize the chapter, key concepts. The types of imperfect inf information depends on a situation. 
where the buyer, seller, or both don't have 100% certainty about the quality of a product they're buying or selling. Information about the quality of product is imperfect as well. This may make it more challenging for a market to exist. When the seller has more information than the buyer, the buyer will be hesitant to buy. Markets have alternatives to deal with imperfect information, such as in good markets, buyers would depend on warranties, money back guarantees, service contracts and reputation. In labor markets, employers facing imperfect information for potential employees turn to resumes, um, recommendations and occupational licenses for particular jobs and employment trial periods. In capital markets, lenders dealing with imperfect information, uh, they will be, uh, in order to borrow anything, you will be required to have a detailed loan application, credit checks, have a co-signer as well as collateral. The second part of the second half of the lesson, insurance is always a way of sharing risk. People in a group may pay premiums for insurance in case something bad were to happen. The ones who have experienced the event will be compensated accordingly. And in, in an actuality fair insurance policy, the premiums of a person pays up to the insurance company are the same as the average amount of benefits for a person in that particular group. The more has a problem arises within insurance markets when the insured have less reason to take steps to avoid the cost of risk. So instead of avoiding risk, they wouldn't give much care to it. Various insurance policies have deductibles, co-payments, or co-insurance, which reduce the moral hazard problem by requiring that the insured party take some of the cost before collecting the insurance benefits. So if you were to do something, you would also have to pay for it while before taking benefits. In a free in a fee for service financial financing system, medical care providers receive reimbursement according to the cost of services they provide. An alternative method is through health maintaining organizations. Adverse selection occurs in insurance markets when insured buyers know more about the risk that they'll face than an insurance than the insurance does. As a result, the insurance company runs the risk that low risk parties will avoid because it's too costly for them, while the high risk parties will embrace it because it's a better deal for them. That concludes this.